Okay. So the Hardly Boys did a pre-tape in the back. They won a tag team title shot, but the Hardy Boys came in, and they need a tag team title shot. And then here came Christian Cage and Jungle Boy and Dino Douche, and they made the challenge for a tag team title three-way ladder match next week on TV. Oh, f God. At least that's something we can skip. But a ladder match, a triple threat ladder match between Spot Monkey Central, the Cucamonga Kids, Jungle Boy and Dino Douche, and Dino's going to try to do all the flipping he can do, so that'll be goddamn uglier than a fucking brown-eyed fucking mud fence. And Matt and Jeff in a ladder match. How much brain damage do they need to give the Hardy family in this company? Matt's had three concussions that we saw on live television. Jeff Hardy is, is, was a near hospital case the other day. And that's something I heard Uncle Dave just blister in the WWE and the doctors for letting Cody work with a torn peck. He had probably one of the worst bruises because of the internal bleeding that goes on when you tear a muscle or a tendon. Horrible bruise, ugly bruise. That's a painful fucking injury. But there is no way working with a torn peck can give you brain damage. But Uncle Dave was on the goddamn white horse and wearing his shining armor about letting Cody work one of the better WWE matches of the year while injured with a torn peck. But Jeff Hardy, who almost killed himself a couple weeks ago in that thing with Darby, Matt Hardy, who actually was brain damaged in front of us on several occasions on their television. The guy cross-bodied his face. The guy threw the chair in his fucking head. The guy knocked him off the goddamn forklift. And he did the WRAF deal, walking recklessly and attempting to fall. Couldn't get his fucking legs underneath him. They should have stopped the match. They did stop the match and then started it again. Jeff Hardy didn't remember the match he just had with the Hardly Boys. So are, do we have a double standard here? A guy gutted through a great match of main event of a pay-per-view with one arm because he tore his pec or a guy doing garbage fucking matches, not even in a ring, in AEW, getting brain damage and being allowed to go on? Which is worse? You know, the Jeff Hardy story I heard the other day about the idea that he got knocked out early in the Young Bucks match at the pay-per-view and has no memory of the match whatsoever and just went through the match with whatever instincts he has. Thinking, all right, I guess he'd be on the injured list. They'll keep him off TV and keep him out of the ring for a while. And then they announce this. I'm convinced Tony Khan signed the Hardys to kill them. <laughs> They've obviously done something to hurt him or his family, and he's going to kill them. And it'll be in his ring. That's the only thing I could think of. Uh, so the WWE's concussion protocol is doctors and analytical tests and waiting periods and blah, blah. The, the AEW concussion protocol is how many fingers am I holding up? Two? Close enough. It was three. <sighs> anyway. And I'm still, hey, by the way, on the Cody thing, I'm still kind of uncomfortable with Cody working that match. I mean, I know it all worked out. He got the surgery and... Hopefully in the Royal Rumble, he looks great. But it was hard to watch that match because of the swelling, because of the discoloration. So I'm not defending that either when I say it. But you know what? Here's the thing. This was kind of a flashback. You felt your stomach was queasy watching it because of the nature of the injury and the visual nature of it. And you also knew it had to hurt like shit and you were worried and concerned about him. And is he going to hurt himself worse? Right. And boy, now imagine the only thing different is you don't know it's a work and you think the other guy is trying to hurt that injury even worse. How worried would you have been? I would have been ready to climb the cage with a chair in my hand. There you go. That's exactly the way that the people in the buildings felt about every top babyface in the history of wrestling in the territory days. 
they were worried about him because if he wasn't going into the match with an injury, then he started selling one in the match. That's the way that the heel would get heat. And the feeling that everybody had is I've witnessed it. I had it when I was young enough, and then I've witnessed it in a lot of other people. The feeling that everybody had watching Cody wrestle, knowing he was legitimately injured and there was a chance that he was going to fuck himself up, even though the only way he really could have fucked himself up any worse was if he hurt something else compensating for you couldn't, you can't, as we mentioned, tear a tendon or a muscle twice. It's gone, it's gone. But the people were worried about the baby face, physically worried about his safety and welfare. That's the feeling they had in main event matches, and though not just once in a great blue moon, but every week. We're worried about this guy. He's going to get hurt unless he beats this fucking whoever and wins the title back and gets even for what happened to him. That was why they were on the edge of their seat. That was why they were trying to climb in the ring and help. The only difference is what we were looking at with Cody is those people didn't know it was a work and thought the opponent was going to, instead of trying to help him get through it, thought he was going to make it worse. But anyway, so I'm, I wasn't, if you're a fan of the Hardys, do you want to see them anymore? I mean, I'm not even talking no. about like, yeah, I mean, I'm not even talking about creatively just in terms of their health. Do you want to see them anymore? And that's it. And in 1990, when did dude love start 1997 or eight? Was it, it was seven, seven, I believe. Okay. 25 years ago. How old was Mick Foley? He was still in his thirties, right? And that's when I told him, because he came to me and he said he didn't like, he loved the dude love concept because that was his thing he invented when he was a kid. And he never thought he'd actually get to do it for real in wrestling. And then, of course, he realized that he'd never really done it for real and never on TV. And he didn't really know who dude love was. But dude love, he felt was shortchanging the fans because dude love wasn't doing the high risk shit and taking the big bumps. He was the, the fucking, hey, Valiant Brothers, woo, mercy guy, and the strutting kind of ladies' man guy, and the peace tie-dye kind of guy. He wasn't getting bashed with chairs over his head or falling off cells or going through tables. And he felt like he was shortchanging the people. And I said, I said, Cactus, I said, the thing is, you have a very special talent and or position with these people they have come to like you they don't like your gimmick they like you as a person they can you shine through whether it's cactus jack or mankind or now dude love i said and the the hell in a cell was just the previous year right no <clears throat> that would be when he came back he took the bump the cell was 98 so he'd been doing the other right I believe I get so, my, yeah. So the point is, he'd been doing Mankind, doing all that shit. Remember the bump he took against Michaels where he got drop-kicked off the ring apron September of 96 in Philly and went head-first through the table. Table didn't break in half, he went head-first through it. A hole came in it. He'd been doing all that crazy shit, but Dude Love didn't. And I said, they, the fans have come to like you and to care about you, and they're not enjoying anymore seeing you hurt yourself or do things that are going to damage you they want to be entertained by you now but sometimes you go say they want wrestling and they want action and excitement but sometimes you go too far you go so far they feel uncomfortable they don't want you to be hurt and so they don't feel like dude love is shortchanging them because you're giving them a different part of you and let your body rest up. So he did that for six months or whatever. And then the next summer he took the fucking bump off the cage, but you know, he couldn't stay away from it, but, but that's the thing is it, it's just, it's a completely different mindset from the fans and the wrestlers where he, you know, Cody, he knew cause you could tell from the way he was selling that from the beginning that was a Dusty Rhodes special. He's got the people's sympathy. Not in a working way, but in a shooting way. They know he's hurt. 
He's going to milk that cow for all the fucking juice she's going to give. And it was great because they were worried about him. And that's a feeling that nobody has for the baby faces anymore. Nobody's worried enough to care about their well-being and want to help them if necessary. So anyway, back to this rotten fucking program after we've had that editorial announcement. 